Hello, hello. Hopefully my mic is working. Hopefully. Yes. Okay. Everything looks like it's working okay. Hi, everybody. I know it's been a hot minute, hasn't it? <laughs> so, oh, man. Hang on. I'm going to close some tabs really quick to help this uh, connection. Uh, a smidge, a smidgen, a pigeon, um, smidgen or pigeon or two. Hopefully I'm live. <laughs> Be a little awkward if I wasn't. So um, anyway, <laughs> how is everyone this evening? Uh, feel free to leave comments. Um, hey, bake, uh, Bacon Strip. I love that handle, by the way. Hello. Uh, yes, so we are live on two different platforms right now, depending on where you like to enjoy your live video content. Uh, feel free to uh, leave a comment, say hello. Um, welcome to the book launch party for uh, women of the paranormal. Uh, this this uh, this this book right here that I just uh, released um, earlier this month. So I figured it's finally time to maybe have a party and celebrate it. Um, a smidgen is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I like to use play on words like that. <laughs> so yeah, everyone, welcome, welcome. Um, so uh, I'm going to do a few giveaways this evening, as well as um, some readings from the book. Um, I'm going to use my proof copy, though, so I can kind of, you know, burp, burp, you know, do this whole thing. Um, so the, the book is available on Amazon. Um, you can grab a copy now. Um, if you would like to get uh, a signed copy, then you can go to my Etsy store, which I need to, I just realized I need to add to the ticker. So um, hang on just a minute. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. I'm so prepared for this. <laughs> I'm so prepared. Oh, man. Thank you for the congratulations. I appreciate it. Um, Add banner. Okay, let's do that. There we go. Um, yeah, so you can get a signed copy of the book on Amazon, uh, or you could get a copy of the book on Amazon, and then you can get a signed copy on my Etsy store. So just depending on, um, you know, what you prefer. Now, signed copies are a little bit more expensive because it's covering shipping, whereas with um, Amazon, you know, obviously you're just getting it directly from the warehouse and they just ship it directly to you. So since it is a party, I do have my uh, little glass here of fermented grape juice, and there is a little ghost here that I'm going to slowly save him from drowning um, <laughs> the more I drink. <laughs> Although, can a ghost be taken out by drowning? Probably not. Anyway. Now the party has started. <laughs> uh, for the curious, this is Moscato. Uh, good old barefoot brand. I really uh, splurged, really splurged on this. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, um, feel free to leave some comments. Uh, let's see. Oh, hey, Karen. Karen and Chris. Um, hello, hello. Uh, Baltimore. I was just in Baltimore yesterday. I had a follow up with um, the person who did my arms. My doctor's based at uh, Lutherville. Yeah. So I was up, I was actually up in your neck of the woods. So, hey, Kira. Cheers. Cheers, Bacon. Bacon Ship. God, I love your username. I like Bacon too. <laughs> Beth, yes. It's, you know, for what it is, it's really good, right? It's really good for what it is, you know? You know. Well. <laughs> All right. Hello, hello, Beth. And Jennifer agreed Moscato is the bust. Yes, it is. Hopefully I don't get in trouble. Hey, hey, DM Pace. Hello, hello. So like I said, I'm going to do a couple giveaways this evening um, for a copy of either Women, in the Women of the Paranormal. I should know the title of my own book. Or um, one of my other books in case you've already gotten women of the paranormal. Um, and like I say, you can get a signed copy of the book at my Etsy shop at the spooky stuff Um, I do have a convention coming up next weekend. So, um, you may get those signed copies a little later cause I have to make sure I have enough stock for the convention. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm really selling this whole signed copy, but not doing a good job of it. Um, Thank you, Kira. I am a big fan of Barefoot. Uh, I can break the bank. Excuse the mess. Um, I'm currently in the process of revamping my table, my convention vendor table. So this is like all my supplies um, for that. So, hey, Tiff. Hello, hello. 
All right, cool. So if you have any questions, so tonight is mainly dedicated to the book. So, cause it is a virtual book launch party for women of the paranormal. Um, so questions about the book, like what women are in the book, um, why I chose them, you know, things like that we can talk about. So any questions regarding this um, will be uh, will be selected. Um, Sherry Frey, hey Sherry. Sherry was one of my beta readers for the book. Uh, Sherry leaves some really good feedback and can look and see things that I can't see. And also I wanted to get Sherry's perspective of the book. Um, uh, so I wanted to get Sherry's perspective on, on her reading experience and she was very, very helpful. So um, awesome, Kira. I'm so glad that you're excited to get this book. Um, it seems to be doing fairly well. Um, I mean, as well as a self-published author who's kind of a no-name can do, uh, the book sold out at Haunted America, Troy Taylor's um, Haunted America uh, last two weekends ago, three weekends ago, mid-June. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. I was also very terrified, too, because I only brought 25 copies with me. And then I only had eight copies left by the end of the day on Friday. And I was like, uh-oh. Um and then, you know, it sold out by by noon on Saturday. So uh, I actually ended up having to make a, um, um, I actually ended up with uh, making an order form for, um, making an order form for the book. So like, since it sold out at the convention, people basically filled out the form paid and then I shipped it out to them. So, and plus I had the signed books on Etsy. I probably took about 30 books to the post office this week. Fun times. Um, all right. What inspired me to write this book? Good question. All right. So there was a lot of information out there about individual female paranormal investigators, uh, but I didn't see it all in one place. I'm somebody who I like to have my information like all together. And um, I was browsing my local library and I saw that there were a couple of anthologies of women of history. And um, I looked at that and I'm like, why don't we have that for the paranormal? So I decided I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to write it. <laughs> I'm going to write it. Um, you know, just to have one place to find a resource for all of these um, different women in the field. I started with 12 and I thought it was going to stay with 12. Um, but uh, it turned, it quickly snowballed into having about 80, <laughs> having 80. Um, I found about, um, I found about at least a hundred now at this point. Now I still have to research these individual women to to make sure like hey did they actually do what they say they did or were they actual paranormal psychical researchers um you know that sort of thing so there is some vetting but i had to put a stake in the ground at some point and um this first volume has a very weird number there's 38 women technically it's 37 there is one honorable mention only because I couldn't verify one of the stories. It seemed to be more like legend and myth than fact. But the fact that the story was tied to a woman, I thought was very interesting. So she got an, an honorable mention. Um, right now, it's looking like I'm going to have about 40, 45 women in volume two. And I have started on volume two. Um, actually, a lot of my... I don't want to say rejects, but a lot of the women that I didn't include in volume one got put into volume two. So volume two has actually got a pretty good start on it. I'm pleasantly, I'm pleased with it. Um, I'm pleased. I'm very pleased. Uh, let's see. Bacon, you're the bourbon guy yourself. Yeah. Oh, Dublin winery. You know, I need to explore more into hard liquor. Like I'm not really a person for that, but. I want to dive a little more into that. Refine my palate, so to speak. How long was your research for this book? Um, I started this project about two years ago. Um, it took a long time because I ran into a lot of blockers, research blockers. Um, I was also concerned with like how much to put into the book. Um, there's a few women like Zora Neale Hurston and Alexandra David Neal uh, who have multiple volume biographies written about them. My goal wasn't to recreate these biographies, but more so just provide a high level overview of the women, what 
they've done and where you can go for more information. So I don't want to say it's like a who's who because it's a bit more robust than a who's who book. But think of it like almost like speed dating where you're getting you're meeting a woman of the paranormal. Um, you get an, a high level overview of what her life was like and what her research was about. And then, you know, if you want to dive in deeper, you can check out my sources. Um, every and every chapter ends with, you know, a list of references. So um, just to help, you know, in case there's like, you know, any additional research. But you can see here's Pamela Coleman Smith, who. Uh, who designed the Rider Waite Smith tarot cards that we love and use today still. Um, by the way, I did all of this formatting. <laughs> this was, I hadn't planned on formatting my own book, but here we are. Um, but yeah, so it's definitely, this is definitely, um, it took about, it, it took about two years total between like all the research and um, picking the women. Uh, so, Oh, that's what you meant. Uh, let's see. Um, you know, I was almost tempted as well. Sherry, this is a good question. Have you come across any African-American paranormal investigators or those of us who are ASD? That's a good question. So I did find Zora Neale Hurston. Well, I didn't find her. Other people found her and I included her. I wouldn't say Zora Neale Hurston was a paranormal investigator, maybe bordering on paranormal researcher, but she was an anthropologist. I mean, Zora Neale Hurston is one of the most prolific female Black women writers. Um, and uh she was incredible. She was incredible. Um, who just happened to also be an author, and she wrote several books on firsthand accounts of um, hoodoo, voodoo, um, that and zombies. Uh, she was actually the one to really give some perspective on like the zombie concept, zombie lore, especially in Haiti. Um, so I wouldn't say I wouldn't say she was an investigator, but she was. She did have boots to the ground and was doing research. Um, now. There are a few um, female Black paranormal investigators today, but they are still alive, which is wonderful, and we want we wanted to stay that way. Um, part of the criteria for this book is that every woman in the book has passed away. Uh, the reason why I did that was because essentially, if they've passed on, their story has concluded. Their story has concluded. It's all done. Um, you know, unless you know something new pops out. Um, the the books are pretty mu the book is pretty much what it is. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's oh that's for the haunted America. Um, who are the I'm I'm assuming you're asking who are the women. There's a lot. Um, let me just go through the 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 list the table of contents really quick. We have Catherine Crow, Oxa White Sprague, Helen Helena Blavatsky, the Fox Sisters of course, Cora L V Scott, Eleanor Sidgwick, Annie Besant. Um, Helen Peters Nosworthy, Jane Barlow, Ada Goodrich Freer, Lenora Piper, Violet Tweeddale, Rosina Despard, Jesse Adelaide Middleton, Dr. Florence Barrett, Alexandra David Neal, Pamela Coleman Smith, Francis P. Bolton, and Eileen J. Garrett, Radcliffe Hall and Una Trowbridge, Gladys Osborne Leonard, Dion Fortune, um, Karen, so there's your occultist. Uh, uh, Zora Neale Hurston, Louisa E. Rhine, Rose Mackenberg, uh, you know, skeptical believers out there, skeptics, Gertrude Schmeidler, Dr. Shafika Karagula, Mary Heyer, Thelma Moss, Sarah Wilson Estep, Lorraine Warren, Iko Gibo, Rosemary Ellen Guiley, Linda Godfrey, this is our honorable mention, Antoinette du Leguier de la Gare de Choulers. That's my, um, so that's that's the honorable mention. So uh, let's see. Um, yep. So Dion Fortune, we got my occult. We, that's that's the occultist right there. Um, one could argue Pamela Coleman Smith could have been an occultist too, but not like she wasn't like a leader like Pamela Coleman Smith. Um, but that's a whole other story for another time. Oh yeah, there's enough Kira. There is enough material for I think three books. Um, that's that's I think this is going to be a three volume journey um ideally what i would like to do is do volume two and then do volume three and then come out with like a power tome version so with all three volumes like in one big book make it hardcover like a collectible um but yeah so there's there's enough for a couple couple books at least um the big research breakthrough 
the big research breakthrough actually came thanks to the uh, the lovely librarians at the Library of Congress. Um, I had decided to go to the Library of Congress because, you know, I was right there. So it's like, why not? You know, go go and check it out. Um, I had to get a reader card because you can't actually check out books at the Library of Congress. You can have a reader card, though. So um, I got my reader card, took a couple hours because lines, because um, anybody can sign up for a reader card. Even if you've came in from like Seattle, Washington, you can get a reader card. You don't have to be a local. Um, so hang on, y'all. I'm just going to text my husband and ask him to turn on the air because I am sweating. Um, they're back on. All right. Because I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> um, so I decided after I got my reader card, I decided to go into the main reading room anyway. I'm like, you know, I'm just going to browse and take a look around. And um, I was using, I just went to their like, witchy parapsychology new age section and i was very impressed of what they already had on the shelf um i had thought that maybe there weren't going to be anything wasn't going to be anything to be found just off the shelf so I, I was very optimistic i ended up spending several hours at the library of congress um just and i found like five or six more women just from that and then I made a research appointment with the Library of Congress. And basically I said, hey, I'm looking for female psychical researchers, like maybe connected with the Ghost Club or SPR um, for this research appointment. I had like three or four books I wanted to look at that they were going to pull for me. Librarians are amazing. They ended up pulling like 20 books for me. And they were like, oh, we've never really looked into this before. So this was really fun for us. And I'm like, oh. Awesome. So that's where like all of the, you know, a lot of these women came from. So yeah, that so librarians are amazing. They are amazing. So um, did I try to do any interviews? <laughs> Actually, I did do some interviews for some of the more recent women. So like Linda Godfrey, Rosemary Ellen Guiley, and Lorraine Warren. Um, for Lorraine, I had interviewed John Zaffis. Um, I interviewed him for the book, and he graciously gave his time to chat with me about Lorraine. Um, I know Lorraine can be a polarizing topic sometimes, um, but I figured regardless of your thoughts on the Warrens, Lorraine still did something. Um, she did make an impact in in her career so i felt like she did deserve a spot in the book and also lorraine is not like the most controversial figure in the book there's another one there's two two other ones that are like bang um so there's two other ones and that would be ada goodrich freer and helena blavatsky so um and i know helena blavatsky Helena, Helena, Helena Blavatsky can be a polarizing topic as well. So, um, but again, you know, so much stems from Blavatsky and theosophy that, you know, it's like, how could I not include her? You know, it's one of those, one of those things. Um, and if I, and if the criteria of the book was everyone be blameless and have no issues at all, then I wouldn't really have anyone for the book. So, um, so yeah. Oh, look at that. Okay. So we got a, a Tiff. Thank you. Um, Tiff, thank you for uh, purchasing a signed copy of Women of the Paranormal. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> uh, amazing. Um, yeah, three volumes. And then let's see. Librarians are the biggest and best nerds. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. I still have a few, few more visits in store. Um, gosh, if I can make this like Man, if I could get this book to be, or if I could get to like four volumes, that'd be amazing too. I have a feel feeling that that could very well happen. So, you know, hi. Um, good times, good times. So, all right. So, um, and like I've mentioned, everyone, if you're just joining, feel free to ask questions in the chat. Um, if anyone would like to, um, if anyone would like to come on camera and chat too, you're more than welcome to. Just let me know. Um, I will message you or Facebook you the the studio link. Um, yeah, that's so awesome to interview John Zaffis. Yeah, you know John was very um, very gracious with his time. Um, not only did I interview him about Lorraine, but I also interviewed him about Rosemary Ellen Guiley. Um, I also interviewed her husband, Rosemary's husband Joe. Uh, lovely beautiful human being um 
And then for Linda Godfrey, I had interviewed Jay Batchichin. Um, I think that's how you say his last name. Jay, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. Um, so he he worked with uh, Linda quite extensively. Um, and uh, he was able to give me some really good input and perspective on Linda Godfrey's career as a cryptozoologist. Um, next volume, I am hoping to get more UFO women in this. Um, I do have Mary Heyer, um, who was, uh, you know, who was, you know, Mothman. She was very involved in like Mothman. Um, those reports, uh, John Keel worked with her quite extensively. Um, I don't think John Keel would have earned the trust that he did with the locals had it not been for Mary Heyer. Um, and she was a journalist as well. And so, but she was like the closest one. Um, so my goal is to have more UFO related women as well as cryptozoology women. Um, sadly, there is one who just recently passed away. Um, it's always like <sighs> having more modern women in the volume makes me feel a little sad though, because it means that we lost some of these incredible women um you know they're no longer with us and no longer able to really contribute any more than you know what they've already have done um yeah so uh let's see i'm really excited oh thanks tiff i'm excited for you to read it um hopefully you enjoy it <laughs> Uh, let's see, Karen. Rosemary was wonderful. I met her a couple times. I met Rosemary once. Um, and um, I met her once at the Ghost Excavation Conference that was run by John Sable and Mary Becker. Um, Rosemary was there to talk about like mirror scrying and she had some of her mirrors for sale. I didn't buy one of those mirrors and now I'm kicking myself. Um, but yeah, Rosemary was very generous with her time. Um, she had an open mind. She really, uh, like she, when she would chat with you and, you know, she made you feel like, you know, she was listening and not just, you know, like a lot of, um, better known figures of the paranormal can be sometimes like they make it very clear you're causing an inconvenience and rosemary was not like that at all uh let's see wolf and fox um yeah this book was about a two-year journey two yeah two years because i started this at the end of 2021 not the end mid 2021 ish gosh 2021 was already two years ago y'all hmm it's interesting. <laughs> um, I cannot tell. I cannot tell those stories um, behind the scenes from the PRS trip days. Nope. I'm only talking about my book this evening. Oops. Sorry. Did not mean to put put that on, Kira. Um, yeah. This tonight is all about this baby right here. Um, this is also the thickest book I've written. Like we're going on like 200 and well, like right now 250 pages, but um, my goal was 50,000 words for this book, and then it turned into um, 70,000, you know, um, <laughs> which was uh, interesting. Let's see, Bacon. I have a few of the Warrens books. I feel like people who don't like the Warrens for one reason or another should check out The Demonologist after your book, of course. I've read The Demonologist. That was actually one of the first books, paranormal books I've ever read. Um, I, I went, I, you know, I, I read The Demonologist. I also read The Haunt, uh, not Haunting of Connecticut, um, the one that was covering Arnie Johnson's case. Um, oh my gosh, that title is escaping me. But um, yeah, uh, when I was first starting out in the paranormal field, um, or at least with the research side of it, I basically read every book I could get my hands on. And a lot of those books were about the Warrens. Um, I also read a lot of Hans Holzer, uh, Harry Price, Peter Underwood. Um, and then, of course, random books in the library by very unknown people. Um, I wish I could find those books, actually, put them in my collection of, um, of different things. So good times. Um, let's see. I can do a reading. I can read one of the, let's see, let me see which one of the chapters are. Um, yeah, I could probably read a little bit from this book. Uh, I just need to see who I want to read. It's a tricky question. I could read you the honorable mention story, actually. 
that, that, that's, that's a fun one. That is a fun one. And it's fairly short. So our honorable mention is uh, this, this, this fun individual right here. It's uh, Antoinette de la Guerre de la Gare de Cholet. De Cholières? De Cholières, yeah. Whew, my French is way off. I'm going to read from the other book um, so I can bend this one a little bit. All right. This one's a fun story. All right. Oh, no, I have to read, I have to read her name again out loud. Whew, y'all, stay with me. <laughs> While French poet Antoinette de la Guerre de la Gare de Cholières isn't known for being a paranormal investigator, she was one who utilized reason and skepticism whenever she heard about anything spooky or spiritual. Well, at least that's what the legends say. Antoinette was best known for being a materialist, meaning that she believed that everything had a scientific, logical explanation. In an interview on the Big Seance podcast with Patrick Keller, Tim Prasel was a guest on an episode about early ghost hunting. As I was listening to Tim talk about Athena Doris and other Victorian ghost hunters, he recounted a story about Antoinette that fascinated me so much that it earned her a spot in this book. Antoinette was born in 1638, and she was one of the most notable poets during the reign of Louis the 14th. Yes, 14th in France. She used her writings to defend philosophical materialism. She firmly believed that natural causes could explain spirit phenomena, thought processes, and even love. About 200 years after she was alive, she became a character in a parable that would bring her to prominence in the spooky world. While the story is fascinating and shows early signs of what we would call debunking methods, there isn't much evidence that this incident actually happened, which is why she's an honorable mention. According to the story, Antoinette was a guest at a castle when she heard that the castle had a haunted room. She got excited about the possibility, especially when her hosts mentioned that people don't like to be in that room or sleep in there. Immediately, Antoinette voiced her desire to go into the room and how she even wanted to sleep in the room overnight. Even though the host and hostess of the castle continued to deny Antoinette's request, they eventually gave in, citing that they held no responsibility if anything should happen, should anything happen to her. This would indicate that the hosts themselves also believed that the room may have been haunted or had something disturbing in there at the very least. After Antoinette extinguished the candles and was in total darkness, she started to hear something walking around her room. Not only that, but this mysterious thing was also bumping into furnishings. Because the room was completely dark, she couldn't see exactly what was causing the noises and ruckus. Finally, this creature got close enough to touch. She reached out and realized that this thing was furry. Furthermore, it started to lick her. Again, it was dark, so Antoinette couldn't see, but she held on to the mysterious furry creature until the morning. When she awoke, she was pleased to see that the terrible ghost that had been haunting this room was actually a large dog. Of course, this is all legend, and there wasn't really an account of this on paper until the 1800s, according to Preysel. This story rose to prominence in the early to mid-1800s. One of the earliest depictions comes from an 1817 issue of the literary gazette titled Madame de Cholet's The French Poetess. The story was later retold in 1818 in an issue of the Repository of Arts, Literature, Fashions, Manufactures, titled The Ghost Discovered. The story then appeared once more in 1820 titled Seizing a Ghost in the Percy Anecdotes. But the sharing of this story didn't stop there. It appeared once again in 1853 as part of an article in Sarah Joseph Hale's publication, Women's Record or Sketches of All Distinguished Women. The last mention of Deschelet's debunking, that could be a bad name, um, debunking adventure came in 1867 in a weekly journal called Our Boys and Girls as part of a section written by Mary May Mannering called A Ghost Story. Could this story have actually happened? Perhaps. One could argue that it wasn't until the 19th century that these stories started to be written down. One thing to take into consideration is that stories like these also serve as life lessons, meaning that they were created to teach something. The lesson to be learned from Antoinette is to not believe everything you hear, but instead fully investigate before jumping to conclusions. It should be noted too that the fact that a woman is credited with critical thinking in this time period is also quite interesting. In that period of time, the depiction of women in art and literature mostly painted them as highly emotional, irrational, and hysterical. The lessons of Antoinette, whether they actually happened or not, certainly resonated in the following centuries long after she passed away. 
So that was a. Uh, I can still I still can't say her name, but that was Antoinette de la Guerre de la Garde de Chaliers. Those Chaliers, yes. Um, so. Um, yeah yeah so there you go there you go that was antoinette um that's that's the honorable mention story um and i read that because it's short <laughs> it's short um good all right jennifer says you mentioned that one of your criteria was that the women you included were deceased what was your other criteria um the other one was they had to have been involved like they had to have been like taking charge of um a, an, an investigation of some point or of some um i guess being actively involved in investigating and researching the paranormal and not necessarily a victim because i did find a lot of stories of like mrs smith reports a ghost in her stove and it frightened her you know that kind of thing um one i can't really verify um whether that actually happened or not um especially with newspapers that their main uh their main agenda is to just, you know, you report like when someone goes to the movie theater or um, the Smith family has taken in a visitor from Oregon this week, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so being active in some sort of um, role, taking on an active role in something, whether it's paranormal or not. Um, yeah. So it's a, uh, it's, it's an interest, it's an interest, it was interesting. Um, the other one also had to be like, I, I had to be able to find the story in multiple sources or at least trace it back to um, others. Uh, what was interesting was a lot of the women in this book, um, they're all connected to each other in some sort of way. Like, like Eleanor Sidgwick investigated Helena Blavatsky. Um, Robert Chambers, who was the neighbor that said that Catherine Crow walked around Edinburgh in her birthday suit, um, was Violet, Violet Tweeddales? Hang on, got to verify. Um, but, but that neighbor was a grandfather of, um, uh, it might've been Jesse Adelaide Middleton. No, wait, it might be. Um, yeah, it's, it's Violet Tweeddale. I was right. Um, so Robert Chambers, who was Catherine Crow's neighbor was Violet Tweeddale's grandfather. So it's like, it's, you have these like weird connections and synchronicities with all of these women in the book. Um, it took me aback a couple of times. I was like, wait a second, why does this name sound familiar? And then I would look it up and I'm like, oh, holy cow. <laughs> like this person was the grandfather of such and such or worked with person X, Y, and Z. Um, that sort of thing. So they, they're all a little bit connected. And I guess that that shouldn't be too surprising because us women, you know, the paranormal community, we're all tied to each other in some way, whether we worked with somebody or we're friends with somebody or we investigated with another individual. So I guess it shouldn't be that shocking. Um, we have a family ghost at a Scottish castle called Camlongen. Oh, thank you for phonetic um remind me to tell you about marion carruthers next time karen i see you yeah i would love to hear about that um cool all right so we're at about ooh, wow 30 minutes have passed al already holy cow y'all <laughs> good times i need to drink my uh i need to drink my wine a little bit quicker hang on um keep the questions coming these are amazing and my husband is going to turn the air on. Yay. Um, amazing. <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's see. Sherry, who was your favorite person you researched? Did you feel sad after you finished the book? Um, I was very, so I'll, I'll address the second question first. I was incredibly relieved to be done. Oh my gosh, I was so relieved. Um, <laughs> I was so relieved to be finished. Like, holy cow. It was, uh, like I said, this book took about two years and it was about one of the most difficult books I've ever written because it was so research intensive. And um, yeah, I was very overwhelmed uh, quite often. Oh, there we go. Um, I was overwhelmed quite often. So I was actually, and plus I put a deadline on myself because um, I wanted the book done by Con Carolinas, which was early June, like the first weekend of June. That didn't happen. But I wanted the book to be done by, um, 
I wanted the book to be done by Haunted America. So I really put in like a very strict time limit on myself. So that was the other thing that was the source of my, uh, uh, my stress. And I've done the same thing for volume two, but I'm further along volume two now that I feel confident I can stick to this new deadline for volume two. Um, so I was, a, no, so I wasn't sad. It was more of like, okay, what's the next, what's the next thing to do? My favorite person I researched, this one was what I call a delightful discovery. Um, so there were a couple of, um, there, there were a couple of, women that just kind of came out of nowhere that I was like, wait, who are you? Um, or I would see their names and I'm like, your name sounds feminine. I should look you up because you would be surprised how many men have feminine sounding names. And I'm like, oh, a woman, let's look her up. Oh, it's a guy. Um, <laughs> so I was like, oops. Um, yeah, I think one of them was named Carolyn. Or, and I was like, oh, hey, there's a woman. And I was like, oh, wait, you're a man. Hmm. <laughs> you know, I was like, well, that's uh that's interesting. Um, but you know, it's a time period, but, um, yeah, so this one, so I had some familiarity with this, with one of them, and that was Radcliffe Hall. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Radcliffe Hall was a very, uh, prominent uh, lesbian author of her time. Now I do use she, her pronouns to, to describe Radcliffe. However, um, if Radcliffe Hall was alive today, I do wonder if Radcliffe would have identified as a trans man. Uh, so if you just Google Radcliffe Hall, you'll see her picture and you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and Radcliffe Hall often talked about how she identified as a man in a, or in a woman's body. Um, so that name stood out to me, but also the name Una Trowbridge. And I knew Una Trowbridge was definitely a female. So I was like, I should follow up to this, follow up with this. Um, I had read Radcliffe's book, The Well of Loneliness, um, in college, late high school, early college, when I was discovering myself. Um, and I looked up Radcliffe Hall and Una Trowbridge because I saw them in the table of contents of an SPR journal. Um, so they have, so SPR has this, um, periodical or journal that comes out known as proceedings. Um, and I had seen Radcliffe and Una in proceedings and I read what they were. Um, I read this presentation that they made about their, um, about their sittings with the medium Gladys Osborne Leonard. And I realized they were both women, both identified as women. And I was like, Oh, Holy cow. So Radcliffe and Una were a couple and they were council members of SPR. And uh, so you have an open lesbian couple. I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, if you look up Radcliffe Hall and Una Trowbridge, they were not in the closet at all. Like this was for the for early 1900s. This was very um, this was notable. Um, and Oliver Lodge, Sir Oliver Lodge, who was an SPR member, famous physicist, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, he encouraged them to to present to present their research so i think that was also very telling as well um and it's not uncommon for you know queer people to be in that liminal space alongside the paranormal and psychical research um in fact i discovered that spr there were a lot of queer members of spr lots of queer members um which may or may not be a book in the future just putting out a little teaser <laughs> a little little bit a little bit um we'll see we'll see and um yeah i mean like i said just google radcliffe hall and una trowbridge and you will see what i'm talking about like it's there's no question can i actually can i actually show their book or show their picture maybe actually i think i can hang on I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to do this. Maybe. Can I do this? No? Okay. Maybe not. This card changes. All right. I thought I could do it, but I can't. Oh, dang it. It'd be really cool to be able to show the picture and be like, see, exhibit A. Um, yeah. So that was probably my favorite. Um, so that was probably my favorite discovery. Um, Googled Radcliffe can definitely, yeah, there's no question. There's no question. 
like it's it's there it's it's there <laughs> it's there <laughs> so um how difficult was the editing Ooh, good question um very difficult especially when i was trying to decide if i wanted to do apa or mla for my citations um i originally wanted to do footnotes the whole time but then this genius here was like halfway through the book and was like oh wait you didn't put in your footnotes whoops so which is why the end of the book um, or the end of each chapter in the book uh you get my list of references here so that way you can fact check me and all that good stuff so good times uh did any of the stories freak me out um um that's a good question I'm trying to think if there was any maybe gladys osborne leonard that she kind of weirded me out a little bit um especially with so um spiritualism days uh you know a lot of the mediums back then would have controls so meaning there was like a main spirit that would speak through them um they would be called the control uh so gladys's control was named feta which uh feta was an indian like india indian ancestor of gladys um who spoke through her and apparently it was very um weird because she would start speaking in broken english because you know feta didn't speak english as her first language makes sense um that one was a bit interesting because gladys osborne leonard also not only does she have a chapter of her own but she's featured in two other chapters and that's radcliffe hall and una trabridge and dr florence barrett um because dr florence barrett also investigated and researched uh gladys osborne leonard um and uh Florence Barrett was married to William Barrett, who was one of the founders of SPR. Um, and when he passed away, apparently Gladys Osborne Leonard was the person that he chose to, to talk through. And, um, and Dr. Barrett actually wrote a whole book. She wrote a whole book about it, which is why Dr. Barrett is in, um, is in the book. So, um, APA citations ended up being the easiest thing to do. Um, at least for this style of book so have you ever experienced anything paranormal re while researching this particular book um i know it's gonna say it's gonna be weird to say like this sounds weird but um i felt like there were a few of the women that just kind of were around when i would write um i did feel like rosemary ellen guiley was around when i wrote um which if anyone who knew rosemary in life um that probably isn't very shocking um i just felt a very familiar energy like i had had experienced it before and it remind she reminded me that the, whatever the presence was reminded me of rosemary not anything spooky it was just more of like an intuition thing like i think there's somebody with me um and i and i felt that a couple times like i said rosemary was one zora was another one zora neil hurston i don't know why she'd be coming to visit me but um i don't know i i, I felt maybe it's just the connection i felt to zora's story um zora's story is a bit sad quite sad actually um a lot of things happened to zora that she did not deserve um she was one of the most prominent female black writers and then she fell into obscurity because of a false accusation um and pretty much passed away penniless which is tragic so all right um i'm gonna give away let's see I'm going to give away a set of buttons. Um, so I usually do buttons um, three. I sell, I do them in sets of three. So I have lots of buttons on my Etsy shop. You can take a look at. Um, I have, I have a buy. I have a one for bisexuality. I got a flower ghost button. Um, got pan, LGBT pride ace and uh let's see and now i also have my logo too um but i got a lot of fun i also got this one it's one of my favorites it's this little ghost that says excuse me but boo um <laughs> and uh we also have the trans ghost and then tile um then i also have my logo in black 
and uh, white. So how we're going to do this, um, so you're going to leave a comment um, with a number. Uh, it's going to be a number between 1 and 50. And uh, I have it in my head. Go ahead and uh, leave a comment now if you can guess that number. Any number between 1 and 50 for three buttons. Also gives me an idea of um, the delay, too. The numbers in my head. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. Someone just came through. All right. I'm going to end it in 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right. So the number I was thinking of was 35. And uh, there was one comment that got it almost right on the ball. So, um, DM Pace, uh, find, send me a, oh, here's Callie, by the way, if anyone wants to say hi to Callie. Um, send me a Facebook message. Uh, let me know where I can, I, I will send you a list of the buttons. Pick three and send me your address and I will send you some buttons. Congratulations. Woo! <laughs> All right. Cool. DM Pace, good job. All right, good guess too. I was like, okay, because I had it in my head. I'm like, okay, okay, I see. I see a couple of possibilities, and then I was like, oh wait, there's there's one that's right, almost on the on the on the ball. All right. Now nah, you're you're good. If there was two, I would have just given it to both of you. <laughs> so, um, good. All right. Awesome possum. So, all right. Awesome. All right. Uh, I did see a, a couple of more questions. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Bacon strip. Um, think an event at Jamestown. In Jamestown, you first heard about me. Do you remember that? Um, oh, was it Congregate in Winston Salem? I feel like that might have been where we met. Because I, 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 which I know Jamestown is not too far from Winston. Oh, the hitchhiker at Jamestown Bridge. I actually know somebody whose father encountered the hitchhiker, apparently. I think, I want to say it was like the 70s or 80s. I think there could be something to that. What's my favorite book I've written so far? Sherry, you're going to make me choose? Why are you going to make me choose? Uh, um. Oh boy, probably women of the paranormal. Um, because I kind of wrote that out of selfishness too, because I'm like, I really want like a one-stop resource for all of for all of these um for all these women. So probably that one. Um yeah. So yeah, DM, um send me uh send me a Facebook message, either my personal or just the, the, the Facebook page. Um and yeah, I'll send you the list and you can, um, you can, uh, check it out. So, um, yeah, no problem. So, all right. Um, how many books have I written? Oh boy. Okay. So two of them are currently, well, there is one that's available, but I was new and stupid in the world of self-publishing. So I went through a vanity press, so I don't push that one often. I'm trying to actually get i'm trying to actually get that book back so that i can uh, just self-publish it so i have the haunted actor more than ghosts it's a guide to field or it's a guide to residential cases in the paranormal field um the haunting of the 10th avenue theater 
Brave Mortal's Guide to Ghost Hunting, One Bed Over, A Hospital Haunting, Hamptonville Hauntings, Ghosts of the Trivet Clinic, Women of the Paranormal. I feel like I'm missing one. Seven, I guess? Seven? I guess it's seven. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seven. I guess it's seven books. Yeah. Um, is there anywhere you, in the book you feel inspired to investigate yourself? Oh, Edinburgh, Scotland. Absolutely, Edinburgh, Scotland. Um, Scott, Edinburgh comes up a, quite a few times in the book, actually, in the, especially in the beginning chapters. Um, yeah. 100 percent 100 percent um yeah have you ever thought about writing about female serial unalivers um not me uh troy taylor and amanda woomer have that topic pretty well covered um i think they just came out with a third book of hell hath no fury wow that was hard to say <laughs> um they they did a pretty good job of covering those subjects and uh Hi, Callie Cat. She's right here. Let's see. Let me move the camera down. Hi, baby. You want to say hi? You want to say hi? What's up, little girl? Oh, this is this is Callie, everybody. My 18-year-old Calico. Um, she is the light of my life and uh, the cutest little baby in the world, in my opinion. Um, but I am biased. You want to come? You want to come up here? You want to come up here? She doesn't know what she wants to do. Ah, uh, Beverly says, pss, pss, pss. "Yeah, hi, baby. Hello, my little girl. Yes, the whole launch party is put on pause for this little baby. Yeah, you wanna say hi? You wanna say hi? No, you're not interested. Hey, where are you going?" Oh, she's rubbing. I think she wants, I think she wants out. Hey, you want to go out? She's not really telling me. It's okay. Well, not that I expect the cat to tell me, but <laughs> uh, cute kitty. Thank you, Bacon. Uh, let's see. The, my bird is my life. I feel that. Oh, thanks, DM. All right. Should come across any women, women who did research into the Salem witch trials? No, not yet. Uh, I'm sure there's a few. I'm sure there's a few that I could dive deeper in. Um, my main focus was uh, SPR. I kind of focused in around that and um, theosophy, a cult, a little bit of a cult, because um, I have Annie Besant in there as well as uh, Helena Blavatsky. Um, I would like to include more researchers as opposed to people starting a women starting a religion, if that makes sense. So, oh, my driver's license is right there and the, out in the open. It's my old North Carolina license, so I think it's okay. But, uh, hi, what you doing? Uh, let's see. So to qualify for the next giveaway, the next giveaway is going to be any copy, any one copy of my book books so you can choose women of the paranormal you can choose brave mortal sky to ghost hunting um if you can share this video um either on facebook or really really you can come here you can come here uh so facebook twitter instagram um and use the hashtag the spooky stuff um that's how I'll know that you, uh, and make sure it's public so I can see it. Um, share the video on social media, and then you'll be put into a drawing um, for, a, for a book. So that's that's the giveaway. Is Callie my co-author? She might as well. She sat with me through a lot of the writing of the book. Um, really quick, I am going to add, I'm going to add a, um, ticker for this banners there we go um all right hang on to enter the drawing for a free book share this video with the hashtag the spooky stuff on facebook 
Twitter or Instagram. And and or and actually tag me as well. Because in that way I will see it. All right, let's do that. Scroll across the bottom. Add banner. Okay. So I will do that drawing in a little bit. So say 20-ish minutes. So I'll bake in. It's Sherry, that's fine. We had to put our 17-year-old dog to sleep. Oh, I'm so sorry, bacon. Oh, that hurts. Mm, that hurts. Putting putting down a baby is like, oh my gosh, it it hurts. Gosh, it it hurts. That's all I'll say. Um Sherry, you are fine. Um, you are fine. I got it. Thank you for sharing the video. Huzzah. Um, cool. So what I'll do is I'm going to do an online drawing. Um, I have a drawing app um, or an online raffle, I guess, would be the, the word for it. <laughs> and I'll do the raffle at about 9.15. So, um, and as I see the hashtags or the tags, I'll just add your name. So um, I have an, I have a little thing on my phone to do it. So um, yes, well, it's going to be a wheel of names. That's what it is. So, um, so I'm going to add, I saw Sherry, so I'll add Sherry to the list. And like I said, it could be Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. So I can see it. All right. Yeah, but I see Beverly. I'll add Beverly to the list. Huzzah. Oh my goodness, Cali Cat. <laughs> Let's see, we got Beverly Willard, got you within there. Um, oh, on his birthday. Okay, I'm gonna let this cat out for a moment. So I will be um, right back. Come on, baby. Oh yeah, you want it out. Come on, let's go. Let's go, little girl. There we go. <sighs> this little kitty. <laughs> She she wanted out. That was that was the drama. That's why she was getting very clingy to me. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Bacon. Ugh, that always hurts. That doesn't get any better. No, it doesn't get any better. All right, Jennifer, I see you. All right, so we have. All right, Jennifer. Okay, thanks, Fleetwood. Oh, thank you, Fleetwood Paranormal. Well, Fleetwood, you know. Thank you. I'm excited for October. Yeah, Callie, Callie Cat's a little, she's, she's, um, she's very, uh, she's very, she's, she's my little soulmate. That's what I, that's what I just say. She's, she's my little soulmate. She is, uh, she knows me well. She knows how to communicate with me. Like, she knows how to communicate her needs, which is amazing. Um, yeah, she's pretty awesome. So, um, oh, thank you for using the hashtags and tags. Yeah, basically just use the tag, tag me. Um, just let me know. So, all right. Um, good, good. So while we all are doing that, uh, let's see, any other questions? Mm -hmm. <sighs> All right. Oh, you can see I'm saving the ghost. This, the ghost can now come up for air. <laughs> oh, this is probably my favorite wine glass because, you know, it's like it's a little ghost swimming in Moscato. Oh, I bet. Uh, losing a kitty is so hard. Hey, Judy. Hello, hello. Scariest. Ooh. Um. Scariest investigations. Ooh, that's a that's a good question. All right. Uh, also, make sure that the it's public too, um, just so that I can see it if we're not Facebook friends already. So, 
Oh, yep. You did. You did a right DM. Yep. You did a right. Yep. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I got you, boo. All right. Okay. All right. I got DM in there. Just got to share it with the hashtag. And you're good. All right. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, Scariest investigation. Uh, I have to say it was probably the first time I investigated the orphanage at Gettysburg. Um, I was uh, I was in the basement, and the story behind the orphanage is, you know, there was this really cruel headmistress um, named Rosa Carmichael who is believed to be haunting the basement with all the the ghost children which is very terrifying and sad. And um, at the time I was very into, I was very passionate about child, child rearing, child care, teaching kids and everything. And I got very bold in my investigation at the orphanage. And I was in the crawl space um, known as the hole, which is where these kids were like chained to walls and put in a well and uh, it was terrible. Um, but I basically went on this rant saying, um, how dare you call yourself a caretaker of children? Um, I just went in and I felt this presence in front of me. Like it was pitch black, but I felt like there was somebody right here. And, um, I heard this and I felt the breath, but I heard this and felt the, <sighs> I was done. I was absolutely done. Um, I'm surprised there wasn't a trail of piss behind me as I was leaving that, that area. Um, but I basically told the person who was leading the investigation, I said, I'm good. I good. Um, so I'm like, yep, I'm good. I don't, I don't need, um, I don't need to investigate anymore. We're good. We're good. No, no problem. No problem. <laughs> so I was done. I was absolutely done. That was scary for me. That was very scary. Have you ever thought, thought about doing an audiobook? Yes, I have. Um, I'm actually in the process of trying to price it out. Um, because you do have to pay, you know, for the voiceover person to read the book. Um, and you could do it either, like, you can either do it like a portion of the royalties or you can do it as like a flat rate um, for the production costs and for the VO. So I'm just trying to figure out exactly how I want to do that, if that makes sense. So it's, 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 it's a work in progress. Um, Oh, Beverly. Okay. I haven't gotten very far in the book, but I teared up your final death piece. It's perfect and beautiful and tragic. Lots of feels for those women and souls. Thank you for adding that. Oh, thank I'm glad. I'm glad that moved you. Um, man, when I wrote the conclusion of this book, I was crying. Like I was just like, <laughs> it didn't help though, that I was listening to Hamilton's who lives, who dies, who tell your story. It's the finale to Hamilton. Um, Lin-Manuel Miranda is a brilliant songwriter, um, and musician. And um, yeah, I was very emotional writing that because it was one of those things where, you know, you have people who have legacies, um, but it seems like with these women specifically in this book, the their legacies have been a bit, um, have been buried. Uh, so I really wanted to pay homage to these women and, um, and, really make sure that you know their legacies are shared that they still exist um you know their and that their their legacies and all the work they've done isn't for naught um yeah uh one of the one of the most heartbreaking things that came up while writing is when i was interviewing john zaffis and we were talking about rosemary ellen guiley um so Rosemary was really fighting to break the glass ceiling of having more women involved in TV. Um, and as we know, TV is still very much a male dominated area. And um, Rosemary was really fighting to have more inclusion of women on these shows. And also Rosemary was fighting for more visibility herself. And um, Rosemary wrote over 65 books. I th when I talked to her husband, Joe, he said that he thought that the final count may have been over 80 books. 
So Rosemary was a walking encyclopedia. If there was anybody who was knowledgeable about the paranormal, it was Rosemary. And, um, and Rosemary finally got her big break with paranormal caught on camera. And then Rosemary got sick. And then she passed away not too long after. And uh, one of the things that she said to John Zaffis was, you know, I finally got my chance and now I can't do it. And this is a woman who should have been on TV a decade ago. And that broke my heart. That broke my heart when um, John told me that. So, so, um, yeah. So that 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 was the more more emotional side of writing this book. So, um, yeah. Anyway, where is one place you would like most most like to investigate? Um. I want to go back to the UK. Um, I studied abroad in England in 2007. Uh, I was literally surrounded by some of the most extensive history in the world. And um, I, it was 2007, so it was about a year or so after my car accident and the whole one bed over story. So the last thing I really wanted to experience was anything spooky. I did encounter a few spooky things while studying abroad in the UK, but um, I wasn't really wanting, I, I didn't really feel like I really wanted to dive in back into that um, because if you're familiar with the one bed over story or the, or the haunted hospital story, it's very intense. Um, eight months worth of dealing with a spirit attachment could have been prolonged psychosis too, but um, that was rough on me. Um, so I wasn't necessarily open to ghosts. I did do like an Oxford ghost tour, but that was basically it. Um, I did have a few experiences in my dorm, um, but I would like to go back and retrace my footsteps and um, and really get a good look, a better a better look um, at the spooky stuff over there. So that's really that's where I really want to go. I actually want to go back to Oxford. I want to go back to my old dorm. I want to go back to my old college and really do something there. So um, no no worries, Bacon. Um, uh, has an investigation affected you so bad that you broke down and cried where it was too emotional to handle? Um, I don't know if I've had that experience yet. Um, most of the time when I'm doing any sort of investigation, I'm leading them in some capacity. So I really try to keep my head together. Now, if I was attending as like a regular person where I could just go and investigate and just experience the location and not have to lead anybody, then it might be a different story. But I haven't had that experience yet. I don't know if I want that, though. I don't know. Would you ever come back to the Trivet Clinic? Absolutely, I would. Absolutely. I would go back to the Trivet Clinic in a heartbeat. Um, it's just a little bit of a drive for me now. It's like five and a half hours. So it's it's significant. Um, I could probably do like drive down there during the day and then leave the next morning. Um, so I could probably, I could knock it out on a weekend, but it's just a lot of driving. Um, I've actually entertained the thought of doing a train too. Um, and then just have somebody pick me up. And then I have a team member in Winston Salem, who's like 30 minutes away from the clinic. So, um, so I would have options. Um, but I've debated, yeah, taking a train down there too. And, you know, and doing that because I don't know, maybe it's because I've done so much driving this year that the last thing I want to do is drive more, <laughs> you know, um, that's, a, that's a big one. Judy, I see your post. So I am going to add you to the raffle. All right. All right. So I got Beverly, I got DM, I got Jennifer, I got Sherry and I got Judy. Um, and I do want to do, I want to do a volume two of the Hamptonville hauntings as well, because um, I've had some people come through to me or come, come forward to me saying that, um, saying that they had experiences when the clinic was a nursery, you know, the, I mean, it still is a nursery, but, um, you know, uh, nursery employees who worked for the Campbells who had experiences. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, 
And I've always found it funny that the clinic actually existed longer as a plant nursery than any uh, than any of the other iterations. Um, but it's like, but the hauntings seem to be very much surrounded by the clinic and the nursing home and the detox clinic. So I've always found that to be interesting. Um, and I wondered that, but then it was when I did uh, the reading and the signing at the library, um, the librarian told me that apparently a couple of people have come in asking about me, saying that they had experiences when they were working for the Campbells at their nursery. So I'm like, I need those stories. Um, I need those stories yesterday. Uh, <laughs> um, I also talked to Kevin Campbell, who is the son. He was the youngest son. And he lived at the clinic for like almost 20 years. So um, he didn't really have a lot of, ex he didn't really have any experiences. He did encounter a few spooky things, but um, it was his older brother and his older sister who seemed to get the brunt of the paranormal activity there, which I thought I think is interesting. Because um, Kevin lived there from the time that he was a baby up until he was like, 19, 20 years old. So he was the one that was there like pretty much the longest out of anybody who has ever been at the clinic. Um, so I don't know, I just find that really interesting. There's definitely, I think there's a vault, there is definitely a volume two to that book as well. So I definitely need to um, do some deeper diving, diving in there. Oh, Judy, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, so I'm going to do the drawing in about four or the raffle in about four minutes. So if you haven't shared the video yet, um, make sure you use the hashtag the spooky stuff and tag me as well. So I see it um, right now. I have on the list. I have Beverly, DM, Jennifer, uh, Sherry and Judy. So if there's anyone I'm missing, let me know. And so I can find your um, your post. So share the video. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whichever. Mm, do you know Dan Class? Uh, that's the Hinsdale House is on my list too. Um, it just keeps filling up <laughs> before I could like actually book it. Um, I'm actually also really trying to go to locations I've never been before in 2024. Um, but also I live in DC and um, I, I was uh, doing like a list because I make I'm gonna make some content on haunted Washington, um, and there's like, uh oh, come on connection. All right, and there's like 50. I kid you not. There's like 50 haunted locations just in my vicinity. I'm not even joking, and I'm not even counting Baltimore. Um, I'm just focusing on. Uh, Alexandria, Arlington, and Washington, D.C. That's it. I'm not focusing on any other areas. And um, yeah, I was very surprised of like how, I mean, I knew there was haunted locations around me, but I just didn't really realize how many. So I think I want to, I want to explore that a little bit. I want to explore that a little more. So, um, which could very well be a year, a year project right there. So um, good times. Good times. Ah, come on. There we go. All right. Um, I would not. I would not. I think, I hope that there are no souls there. I really hope anybody who has connections to that place has moved on. Um, but if there are souls that are still there, I don't need, I don't need to bother them. I would not. Um, I feel like there are, there are some places that, um, shouldn't be touched and that's one of them now if um now if there's a member of the jewish community who wants to do that i mean i may i think i i would i would definitely feel okay with that um because that's their that's their history uh, but me as somebody who is not jewish um i don't even think i have answer i don't even think i have relatives who are either at least not born or anyone who have been who would have been affected by that period of time um yeah, I wouldn't. And that's just out of respect because that's not my, it's not my history. Uh, it's not my culture, but also just the utter devastation that happened there. I think it just needs to be left alone. Just let it sit there as a reminder of how horrible people were to each other and how that should never happen again. So that's my thoughts on that. Um, I would imagine that Arlington is very haunted. It is. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot with Arlington. Um, 
I'm only 10 minutes away from Old Town Alexandria. Actually, one of the the um, farmers markets I go to, the Old Town Alexandria farmers market, um, George Washington would send his crops from Mount Vernon to that farmers market. So there's a lot of history there. Arlington has a good amount. Old Town Alexandria, I mean, uh, there was a, a a a mansion. It was like two units, but it was a mansion that was for sale for five million dollars. And I was like, man, if only I had $5 million, it'd be perfect. I could live in one side and then open the other side up for like ghost tours and ghost hunts. Um, but alas, I did not win the lottery. Um, I do not have $5 million. Um, I'm going to have to sell a lot more books to get $5 million to buy that house. Um, but uh, it was built in like 1713. And I'm like, oh, the history that you have seen, house. I can't. It's got to be amazing. Um, all right, cool. So last, thank you, Sherry. Thank you. Thank you for that question. I think it's an important question to discuss. Um, I think it's important because um, there's a lot of content creators. Um, there's a lot of content creators who are talking about going to that place. Um, I already have an issue with content creators going to the um, to a certain forest in Japan where people unalive themselves. I have a big issue with that. Um, there's a content, there's a YouTuber that's in Japan or that went to Japan is making a lot of Japan content. And um, as somebody who is part Japanese um, and has relatives who are Japanese and uh, having some understanding of spiritual views of Japan um, and the sacredness that comes with that, I have some feelings about those videos. Um, I haven't watched them yet. I'm debating if I'm going to hate watch them or just watch them and see how I feel about it. But um, yeah, yeah, that's all. It makes me feel some feelings. Okay, so I have, just making sure I got everybody before I do the drawing. Um, oh yeah, 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 you're, yeah, I got a DM. Yeah, I figured that's what it was. Um, you're fine. Uh, I was just going to say that about the forest. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't think that's a place that I don't think that forest should be made for like content. Um, I have feelings. I have strong feelings. OK, um, so this is who I have. I have Beverly, DM, Jennifer, Sherry and Judy. Um, thank you for sharing the video. Um, if I've missed you, let me know now because I will check and add you and then we'll do the drawing. And I'm checking as well. I'm checking my notifications. Oh, yeah, there's, yeah, Judy. Judy got Twitter, too. Look at you. Nice, Judy. All right. Judy's hitting all the social media. Oh, all right. Okay. I'm checking any last minute additions. All right. Cool. All right. I really do need to win the lottery, though, if I want to buy a Hana location. Actually, my goal is I, if I won the lottery, I would try to buy the Trivet Clinic if Tim and Doug were selling. Um, I would probably buy a Hana location out here. And basically, my lottery money would go towards Hana locations. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I would that that lottery money will go pretty quickly. Um, yeah. All right. So, yay, made it back here. Um, perfect. So, ooh, wonderful question. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I would do a book. I might make some content. Um. Maybe some videos, maybe. I don't know about a book though, because I feel like if they're still alive, they still their story is still happening. So I worry that it would date the book, if that makes sense. Um, like say if I wrote a book about one of my female team members, it comes out in October, and then January of the next year, she finds this incredible piece of history um, that puts her on the map. Then 
that book would be dated, um, if that makes sense. So, I mean, I could go back and update the book. That's the perks of being self-published. You can go back and edit the manuscript um, and put it out as a second edition, you know. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Or I could make some other content. Because I do want to spotlight female paranormal investigators who are alive today and, you know, doing some awesome things, too. Um, do I play the lottery? And not really. Well, I do. I do. Um, I, I don't do like the scratch off cards, though. I do like actual lotto tickets, lottery tickets. <laughs> so um, I've never had good luck with the scratch off. Love that emoji thing. Um, do you feel personally that cemeteries could be haunted? Um, I If they were, I'm not sure if they would be haunted by whoever's buried there. I don't know. Maybe the last. Ooh, that tired hit me. Um, I feel like the last place I would want to hang out in the afterlife would be where with my remains. Um, I don't know. It's a good question. Mm. My ghostie is coming out. <laughs> my ghostie can come up for air at least. Ooh. All right. Cool. Okay, well, so I got Beverly, DM, Jennifer, Sherry, and Judy. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to do this raffle. All right, here we go. Um, okay, there we go. It's it's spinning. It's spinning. And we have. It looks like it's Judy. All right, Judy. Congratulations. All right, Judy. Well, send me a message. And um, so Judy and DM, you have, you send me a message on Facebook um, or some sort of social media platform. Give me your um, mailing address, your uh your um just basically how like and which book which button and all that good stuff you want so congrats judy and dm very good very good huzzah yay and judy is like one of the best human beings ever by the way um i've known judy since 2016. judy's one of my raleigh friends uh i was in judy's play um, that she wrote called Haiku. Um, Judy was my director for a show that I was in too. So um, yeah, good times. Good times. Uh, Judy's a wonderful human being. All right. Awesome, y'all. Um, cool. Well, I'm going to start wrapping this up. Uh, if you would like to get a copy of Women of the Paranormal, um, you can go to Amazon. Oh, yeah, Judy, you were in a reading of my play, too. <laughs> you played my mom. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, all the love for Judy coming up. So, yeah. Any more videos of the cat? That was great. Yeah. Oh, nice, Bacon. We're outside of Raleigh. Um, yeah, so you can get Women of the Paranormal on Amazon. Um, if you're willing to wait a hot minute, um, you can get a signed copy off of Etsy uh, and you can, you know, do uh, and you can uh, do that. Um, Amazon or Etsy, either one's fine. Um, yeah, yeah, it's good. Good times. Um, oh, thank you, Judy and DM. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, if you all have any questions, you know, feel free to, you know, get in touch. Uh, YouTube, Facebook. Um, I have a Facebook group. Uh, YouTube, there's a little community on YouTube as well. I also have a Patreon um, starting about three bucks per month. Um, Patreon subscribers got to see uh, Women of the Paranormal before it got edited. It was probably terrifying to read because um, I definitely have to have an editor. Uh, <laughs> but they got to see early editions of Women of the Paranormal before it was published. And um, yeah, so Patreon's also a place to hang out too. Um, and I, and I think that starts at, yeah, three bucks a month. I'm debating adding a dollar tier as well, you know, for super low budgetness as well. But um, we'll see what happens. But anyway, um, thank you all so much for joining me tonight. Thank you for joining me for this virtual book launch party. It was so awesome to hang out with y'all. Um, 
I'm going to finish my wine and probably head to bed in a little bit because um, I got to get up early for work and teaching. Um, oh, thanks, Sherry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. I'm, oh, yeah, that is, that's right. Sherry's a Patreon subscriber. So you got to see the early editions of the book. Um, Goldsboro, I know exactly where that, where that is. Um, oh, DM, thank you. And yeah, definitely send me a message, um, DM about your buttons. So, um, awesome y'all. We'll have a wonderful night and, uh, I'm going to have YouTube content back up. Probably I would say I'm aiming for July 19th, um, to give me some time to edit. So yeah. Oh, nice. I work in libraries often sad books that were uncorrected copies at conferences. That's awesome. All right, y'all. Have a good night and um, I will see you. I will see you around online. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Thank you again.